Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is Dave Rowe. He's going to tell you what it was like to play bass for Dwight Yoakam. I got the Dwight Yoakam gig. Uh, do you know who Keith Gaddis is? Dwight wanted to go to a small band, not all the guitars and all the steels and all that crap. And he wanted to put together, and I think Cash influenced this, he wanted to go back to a sort of a rockabilly three-piece plus him, so four including him. And Keith Gaddis was a guy that I had done a lot of work for here. He moved to Los Angeles. Let me give a little plug to Keith. He's got a record called Big City Blues. It's one of the best records ever made. It's unbelievable. But he, kind of, he Dwight fell in love with Pete, Keith. Found, they found a good drummer. They said, we got to get it. I want, a, I want an upright bass, man. He said, I want slap bass on everything. You know. So he said, you need to get Dave, bro. So I didn't have to audition. I just showed up in L.A., and there I was. And I was surprised, actually, because his bass was his music was all electric bass, you know, all of it. And he just said, I said, well, what should I do? He said, boom, chicky, man, give me the Johnny Cash shit, and we'll just rework the songs that way. And it was explosive. Was this right around Sling Blade? 2000 to 2005. Sling Blade had already happened. And, and a lot of actors, you know, like backstage, most bands have musicians come and He had a combination of actors, and we got, got to see. I got to meet Vince Vaughn and Jeff Bridges and, uh, of course, uh, Billy, Billy Bob Thornton was around a lot. All those guys were around. The big thrill for me was we played San Antonio, and Tommy Lee Jones came, and I'm a big Tommy Lee Jones fan. And he came right up in my face and said, you're a good hand, brother. You're a good hand. And I just wanted to die. It was great. He was an impressive human being, man. Yeah. I'm going to forget the name of the character, but the scene in Sling Blade of uh, Dwight with his band is like the most accurate uh, local band thing. It's everybody's been through that. And, that, and in a lot of ways, it was when Dwight would get pissed off, which he would do sometimes, that's, that's who it was. <laughs> And a lot, and every, everybody will tell you that, you know. I think Billy. I remember asking Billy Bob, you know, and he just said, "Man, I saw him chewing out his band one time." I said, "That's my guy right there," because Dwight is a great actor. I mean, I mean, of all the guys that dabbled in both, I'd say he's probably the best. There's no doubt about it. You know? I, just going uh, to the point of what I just said, he was a little tough to work with sometimes. But I'm going to tell you something. He's one of the smartest people I've ever met, and I mean. It, I guarantee you he's a Mensa. He's, he's just over the charts. He's well-informed, well-educated, and the most generous guy I ever worked for. I mean, his presence at Christmas time and when we flew into somewhere, he stayed at the Four Seasons and we stayed with him or the Ritz-Carlton. He never penny antied us about anything. So most money I ever made touring. He was generous there. He was just, I got nothing bad to say about him. I loved him, you know. And singing with him, which is my other thing that I do, I did all the background vocals with Cash, mostly with Vern, which I learned a lot from about singing country harmony. And I was the main singer with Dwight, so Dwight was probably the best singer I ever sang with. Flawless. Never made a mistake. Ever. Not once. His shit always sounds good. It's just perfection. Was he particular about the backing vocals? Yes. We would work him out a little bit. Because of my experience, that style of harmony, my experience with Gosden got me through all of that. He just, and he had seen fit video of me singing with Gaz, and he said, "That's what the, I want you to do—the same thing here." And that's what I did. The singing part was easy. Remembering all the words was hard. <laughs> it was loud for some of the same reasons with Cash. Speaking of PV, Dwight loved to play his acoustic guitar through this monstrous thousand-watt PV thing that sat amongst the, one on each side of the drums if i remember correctly it was so fucking loud that they couldn't put it in the in the front of house and i think to this day that's that's an issue that they deal with but then gaddis played through two big fender amps and i i, I played through a amp amp again and it was loud it was punchy you know but very clean and the way he you know how his music's so arranged and it was just really neat it was not as uh, chaotic as the cash stuff because the cash stuff was, there were never any count offs. It was just, let's go, bang, and you fall in. We called it falling in. And, but Dwight was much more precise and precision. A little bit taking that model from the cash model, but you know, still keeping Dwight's OCD, if you will, about everything. Yeah. And I love Dwight. I think he's one of the most talented people ever. I still think he was the last great country artist. You know? okay. It was hilarious. I mean, it was. 
just a bunch of hillbillies riding around in a jet plane. It was great. And Dwight loved it, and he took pride in knowing everything about the jets he was on. He he was a, sort of an amateur jet fan. He could tell you everything about a Learjet, and it was interesting talking to him about it. Did Buck Owens ever uh, come around? No, but we came to him. We played at the, the Palace in Bakersfield a couple of times, and Buck was there both times. It was uh, pretty cool to meet him. He's another one of my big heroes. But he did not play both those nights that we were there. He had already pretty much hung up his guitar by that point. He was not well, I don't think, where he was at the beginning stages of his of his decline, I think. But he was great getting to talk to him and hang out. He was cool, man. He was really funny. It was Keith Gaddis on guitar, and then he left because he got a record deal with RCA, and Eddie Perez from the Mavericks came in, and he was the second guitar player I worked with. But it was they were both so great, it didn't matter. I mean, you know. So I was there like five years, and when I left, Eddie was the guitar player. Click this video if you'd like to hear Dave telling a great story about playing with Johnny Cash, and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.